guys, it's Jen and I'm back with another Inspiration is Everywhere video. Today we're going to take inspiration from fine art and this stemmed from a trip that I took to a local museum um, and I saw a few things, art installations and different things that really inspired me and I want to show you a few different ways that you can interpret some art into um, a layout of your own. Now there's endless possibilities with this with this set of inspiration and so I'm just going to show you a few things but I hope that you'll be able to take the things that I talk about um, and apply them to whatever art inspires you. So the first thing I wanted to point out, so I'm on my Pinterest board called Inspiration, so you can definitely check this out if you are looking for a little bit of inspiration on your own, but you can look for inspiration all over online. Um, this is an installation that I saw at my local art museum, and it's in real life, it's really super cool. I don't know if you can tell from this photo, but there are a bunch of strings. It's like thread strung up all across the ceiling um, in a rainbow pattern. And they're just all of these little strings make up this whole really cool thing. And I thought about how cool it would look to do some string art or um, a bunch of string behind maybe like a cutout of my title on my silhouette and put a whole bunch of string um, I could do it in a rainbow even like this behind it and how cool that would look on a layout. So that's exactly what I was thinking of when I saw the this string art. Um, an, another thing that I've, I've been thinking about a lot lately is how much uh, art is kind of creeping into scrapbooking with a little bit of watercolor and mixed media techniques. So um, you could look up some of your favorite watercolor artists or different different techniques that you could try. This is something that I just found here on Pinterest with this kind of starry sky background. Um, and this would be something that would be easy to recreate with maybe some distress inks. If you are at all a fan of Christina Werner, she does a lot of techniques like this on her card making videos. Check her out on YouTube if you haven't seen her already. But um, this kind of really pretty modeled painted look for a night sky and then there's like white splatters all over it. You could try that on a background or even just on, sometimes what I like to do is just totally experiment with art on a piece of paper and then I'll cut it up into squares or circles or different shapes to use on top of my layout. And that's a great way to incorporate some of these more artsy techniques into a layout if you're a little bit more uncomfortable with it. Um, something that I have been loving lately is really the texture of, of the art. So, um, like impasto or, uh, oil painting has been something that has been inspiring me lately. And I found this particular, um, series of, of art, um, little pieces here that are circular. They're oil paintings on wood. And they're just colors, but I just really love the texture of them. So I'm going to try to incorporate something like this onto the layout that I'm making today. Um, I was also thinking about how I love Monet, Claude Monet, and the colors that he used in his paintings were just beautiful. And so color can be an, a big influence from um, your, from the art piece that you're, that you plan to look at as well. So think about all of those things. And he also used oil painting. So there's texture to, to those paintings as well. So those are some of the things I was thinking about. The other thing I was thinking about is how, here's a picture of the Mona Lisa, but what I mostly was thinking about is how art um, pieces are framed in these large gold gilded frames that are you know, these heavy frames. And so that would be a fun way to incorporate that a little bit into your layout as well as to do a heavy uh, frame of some sort. There are even papers out there that have um, those frames built into them um, that you can cut out. I know that I'm thinking of a specific Maggie Holmes paper that I've seen um, that has frames on it. So something like that could definitely influence your layout as well. So those are the things I'm kind of keeping in mind as I go about today. And this is going to be a really artsy and fun and playful layout. Um, you're just going to see me create it as I go and we'll see how everything ends up. Hey guys, it's Jen. So this is what I'm, this is the photo I'm going to be using for this layout. I'm starting with some watercolor paper just because I really want that kind of artsy feel to it. And I've got a bunch of stuff pulled out and let me just tell you what I'm kind of planning here. So I showed you this in the video, these um, Lisa Madigan uh, art pieces that are on wood planks. 
and I'm going to create some sort of background with some just some acrylic paint but I want it to have a lot of that texture so I pulled different kinds of paints here and I pulled based on the colors in in my photo but I'm also going to add in some coral so I've got some pink um, some coral and some white and some blue and I'm gonna mix um, some of the colors together to get some softer looks and some with white and so that is my plan for the background and I'm going to apply the paint to get the texture you can see how awesomely textured I don't know if this will focus on here there we go um, there's a bunch of awesome texture in here and so I'm going to use my palette knives to get a little bit of that texture going on to the layout rather than painting it on because I'll get more of that texture and I'll keep a paintbrush handy in case I want to um, use it to to do certain things so that's what I've got planned for that and then I'm also going to do a big heavy chunky frame sorry my phone is going off here a big chunky frame around my photo and what I plan to do is to deco foil um, some paper and then I'm going to emboss it. I'm using a polka dot embossing folder. So I'm taking the inspiration of the fine art frame, but I'm making it a little bit more cutesy by doing a polka dot rather than something more formal like you see on most ornate frames. So I'm going to do a polka dot and um, then I'm going to distress it a little bit with some, some black ink. So I'll show you that as we go along. So I plan to start on the background and then while it's drying I'll work on the frame. So I'm going to put you on fast forward and then I will um, talk you through exactly what I'm doing. Okay so I'm going to get started by pouring out some of those paints just into this paint palette. I'm not cleaning it out. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of extra color from stuff that was in there already. That paint that I just poured is a super old Making Memories uh, peach paint and it's super thick. I don't know if it's meant to be like that or if it's just because it's really old, but it ended up being a really good texture. Um, so I'm going to get my photo and just kind of see where I want to put stuff. And then I decided that I wanted my paint to be a little heavier, so I'm getting out some heavy uh, gel matte medium and what that's going to do is thicken up the paint without changing the color of it and it ends up working really well. Sorry that the focus is going in and out here but I will fix the focus in just a minute. So I'm just using a palette knife to kind of slather that on. I didn't add any of the heavy matte medium to that that peach color because it didn't need it. It was already thick but I did add some to the white to the pink. Um, I'll add some to the tan and to the blue as well. Now I'm going to, I really like the way that the tan looks with these colors and I'm glad that I added it in here. Um, I'm going to add some heavy, uh, or a lot of white to my blue to make it a really light blue because my daughter's shirt is light blue. And then I accidentally splattered some white paint so I decided to go with it and just really splat it and I like the lines that make. So I just grabbed some runny uh, white acrylic paint and just kind of threw it on. So here's where I'm mixing up that blue paint. I do have some, um, I'm mixing some gel, uh, the heavy gel in, into it. And I'm going to put the blue paint on in kind of circles. And I'm leaving a lot of peaks so that it's very textured because that's the whole reason I wanted to do this was to get a textured look. And that's why I'm using the heavy gel medium and the acrylic paint so that I can get those peaks uh, where the paint lifts off the paper. So I'm really just playing with the paint, kind of slathering it on, no rhyme or reason. I am trying to get an even distribution of the colors so you can see that I'm not putting a ton of one color in one spot, just so that it, it has a nice balance of color. And um, like I said, I'm putting circles with the blue and then I just took my palette knife and went back over the circles to give them a little bit more definition. And so now I'm going to set that all aside to dry and I'm going to work on that heavy gilded gold frame that's going to go around my photo. You'll have to forgive me if my voice sounds a little bit deep or scratchy. I'm just starting a cold so just trying to power through that. But um, what I'm going to do here is create that frame around my photo. So I'm going to end up cutting cardstock uh, one inch larger than the photo. So my photo is four by six and my mat will be six by eight, which means I'm cutting one inch strips and then I'm going to cut the two top strips to six inches and the sides to eight inches. 
If you're wondering why I didn't just cut a 6x8 piece of cardstock, it's because I really wanted this to look like a frame. And what I'm going to end up doing is um, cutting the corners so that they fit together like a picture frame would, so diagonally on the edges, and you'll see that here in just a second. So I started with my strips a little bit wider at one and a half inches, but realized that was way too big, so I cut them down to one inch. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, cut the diagonal edges on those pieces of paper so they fit together like a picture frame. And then I'm going to take that double-sided adhesive, which is easy cut adhesive from iCraft. Um, you can get that at ThermoWeb. And, um, I'm going to put it on one side of the of the frame and that's what's going to adhere my foil to it so you'll see that here in just a second as well now this is an instance where you could be really precise and measure things you can see that I am NOT doing that um, I just was too lazy to do that and since I'm going for an artsy look anyway I'm just not going to worry about it I'm gonna let the the messiness and the unevenness just be part of of what that the whole thing's about. So here I'm just a little bit off frame, sorry about that, but I'm just adhering those pieces of the frame to my double-sided adhesive. And this um, adhesive is six by six, and so it's a little bit smaller, but I'm just gonna cut extra pieces to fit in the spaces that didn't quite get covered. So no big deal. And now I'm almost to the point where I am ready to start adhering my gold foil. Now I'm using the ThermoWeb Deco Foil in gold. You could use any color. I um, And I'm just going to use a scrap so you don't need like a huge piece or anything. Um, what you see me doing now is just putting all of that uh, adhesive on the backs of all of those pieces and that's going to take me just a second. I'm using some non-stick scissors which is really nice for this because this adhesive is really sticky. Okay, so skipping ahead here just a little bit, now I've got all of that adhered. And what I'm doing is just putting those onto my piece of scrap foil. I'm just putting them sticky side down. I'm going to place them all down and then rub them generously so that the foil transfers and then peel those up. And it's not going to be perfect because I'm not using, uh, this isn't like a correct method for adhering foil, but it's pretty good. And you can see the little spaces where the foil didn't adhere. I don't care. Um, it's not going to bother me. So now is where I'm going to stick these in my embossing folder and send them through my Big Shot. You can see that my embossing folder is smaller than my frame piece, but that doesn't matter. I'll just run it, run it through on the other side and I lined up the dots so it's pretty close. And like I said, I'm not going for perfection here and it doesn't matter to me if it's exactly perfect. So I'll just send all of those through my Big Shot to get the polka dots on them and it looks really super cool when it's done. Um, really like the way that turned out. And you can see there's lines and imperfections, but in the finished product, you really can't tell. And we're going to put ink over this to give it that antiqued look, so it's really not going to matter. So that embossing folder is from the Paper Studio, which I think is a Michaels or Hobby Lobby brand. I'm not sure, but you can get Swiss Dot embossing folders anywhere. I'll try to link to a similar one. Um, and I'm trying to use my tools more lately, so I've been, I was glad to, to get that used. So just putting that, the last one through here, I think it's the last one. And now I have dots on all of my little pieces here. And I'm gonna move stuff off to the side so you can see it. So here's what it ends up looking like, which is very cool. And I'm gonna start by trying some black um, permanent ink and it's not gonna quite work. So I'm going to change my mind and I'm gonna use a paintbrush and some India ink. And this really works well. I'm just using a super cheap paintbrush, the kind that you get with the watercolor sets, like the inexpensive ones. And I'm using some Daler and Roni, or Rowney, or however you say it, black India ink. And it looks really, really cool. So I'm just using um, a paper towel to kind of brush off the ink after I put it on. And it's giving it a really nice aged look. You'll see that better in the close-up photos at the end, but just, it looks really cool. You should definitely try this technique. It gives a nice um, antiqued, frame here. So I'm going to come back and talk to you real time for just a second. So at this point my stuff is dry and I really like the way it looks. It's just this fun, really cool effect. But I'm losing a lot of it when I'm placing my photos on top of, or my photo on top of it. And so I'm trying to decide, and that 
Also, part of the reason I'm losing it is because I have this huge frame, and so I'm trying to decide if I want to maybe cut this up um, and use it, maybe cut it into circles or something, um, just so that I get a little bit more of that effect. And I'll still get the painty look, but I won't cover so much of the pretty little bits up. So I'm trying to decide that right now. I'm also trying to decide if I want to use some of my new, um, I downloaded Wilna Furstenberg Spring Cut Files, and they kind of match this, and so I'm trying to decide if they'll work or not. Um, I think I could make them work, but I don't know quite if they are the right thing for this. But I like them because they have an, a very artistic quality. They're watercolored or something. Um, and so I like the idea of it. So what I'm going to do to decide whether I want to cut this up or not, I have the leftover paint from my palette. Um, there's a color I didn't use that's a brighter coral in here. Um, I just put that on my extra piece of watercolor paper that I trimmed this down from. And so I'm going to cut this into circles and decide and see how that looks. And then if it, if it looks nice, then I might cut this up too. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. Okay, so like I mentioned, I'm just going to test this out on my scrap piece of paper here. I'm using some circle dies um, and just kind of as a forewarning, since I have a lot of paint on this page, it's pretty hard to cut through. And so some of the pieces uh, cut through okay and some of them I have to kind of punch out and I'll have to just trim a little bit on the edges, but that's okay. I realize that I have a lot of paint layered up on here. So that's just something you need to keep in mind. These are some Spellbinders dies that I'm using and I actually would love to get some more sizes. I don't know if punches would work on this. It might have a too hard of a time punching through, but I didn't try it. So you could try that for sure. So now that I have a few cut out, I'm going to see if this is a look that I like. I'm trying to show you the texture here of that um, mixed media, the paint. Um, it really does look cool. I was struggling. <laughs> but there's a lot of texture, which is exactly like the art piece that I was going for. And I do also like the fact that it's circles like the art piece was as well. So I'm going to go ahead and lay those circles out to see if I like them. And I do, so I'm going to go ahead and cut circles out of my paper that I created earlier as well. Now, originally I had this on a watercolor paper, and so I'm going to cut that up and, into pieces that will fit through my Big Shot machine. And so I'll just cut that in half and that will be good. And I'm just going to cut a bunch of circles now from this paper. And I'm just putting the circles on places of interest that I think it would be interesting once I cut it out. And these just have the most fabulous texture and I love the way that they end up looking uh, on the final layout. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm putting in a shim a few pieces of extra uh, paper to see if doing that helps to punch through the paper more easily, but I think it's just a matter of there being a lot of paint on the paper, so I'm not going to worry about that, and I'm just going to have to punch them out a little bit. That's okay. So I think I'm going to skip ahead here in just a second after I cut a few more, but just notice from the ones that I cut that I'm trying to get include a few different colors on each circle just to give it a little bit more interest, and I really like the way that they turned out. I know Irit Landgraf did a similar technique where she put a bunch of like rub-ons and stickers and then cut them in circles and I thought that was really, really cool. I love the idea of just cutting something that you make into circles for a pattern that's not so overwhelming. So here I'm arranging the circles on the page and I thought originally that I would go all down the left-hand side of the layout because I know I want to put my photo on the right, but I end up changing my mind to do something diagonal because it just wasn't working for me like this. It was too linear, so I'm going to give it a little bit more of a freeform shape. And I'm going to make this go from the top left to the bottom right. And by doing starting at the top left, since I'm going to place my photo towards the bottom right hand corner, it's just going to draw your eye right down into the photo, which is exactly what I want to do. So just kind of arranging it, seeing if I like that. I do, and I decide to place my photo and my and its frame first and then place the circles around it. You'll notice that my frame edges don't line up perfectly, but as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm not letting that bother me. It's just going to look good enough and I'm good with that. <laughs> so here I'm just kind of tucking some of the circles underneath the frame just a little bit so that it um, has the illusion of going behind the photo. 
and just sticking those down as I like things and kind of trying to arrange them so that I get a mixture of sizes as well. So now I kind of feel like it's really starting to come together. Just going to put a few more and I'm definitely making sure to make some of the circles go off the edge because that makes it look a little bit more natural. Um, and so yeah, just placing some off the edge and then I'll trim them once I have them all adhered down. Another way you could get this look would be to cut a bunch of circles out of a piece of white cardstock and then layer up a pa uh, painted background behind it so that it peeks through. That would give you the same uh, overall effect. So you could definitely try that as well. So I'm pulling out these Wilna print and cut files from um, Wilna Furstenberg Spring Bundle. They're so pretty and I love the way they match fairly well, but not quite. So I keep second guessing myself whether or not I'm going to use them. I can almost always find Maggie Holmes die cuts that I want to use, so I'm digging through those now. And I pulled out the three and the happy day. This is my daughter's first day of third grade, so I thought the three would be nice. That butterfly is from a My Mind's Eye die cut package. And so I'm thinking about that as well. I'm going to struggle with my embellishments a little bit here for a minute. So I'm going to look through a lot of things. In the end, I will come back to this, the Wilna spring print and cut files. because They're just so pretty and I... Um, I like that there's a touch of blue in them, which really works with these colors. I'm looking through all of my chipboard now. There's a little blue bird on this Notes and Things chipboard set from Crate Paper, but it doesn't quite work, so I'm thinking about it, though. If you saw the finished layout at the beginning, you can see that it's a fairly busy layout, but my intention was to keep it pretty um, light on embellishment because I wanted the focus to be on the photo and that all of that paint work that I did. And so I will end up going back to the Wilna stuff for the bulk of my embellishment. That's definitely not going to stop me from looking through all my pretty stickers, though. <laughs> but this goes to show you that you don't need a whole lot um, of, of stuff, like stuff that you buy, to make a layout. You can use um, stuff that you make, or um, like Wilna's cut files, she made them, but you could paint something. You know what I mean? So I am going to pull a couple of word strips off of the My Mind's Eye on Trend chipboard sheet that I have. I think I'm going to push my layout up here in a minute, I hope. <laughs> I apologize for that. But it had that nice peach color, which I wanted to bring in. Now I've got some thickers out thinking about a title that I might create. I don't end up using these, though. These are blue puffy stickers from the um, Crate Paper Little U collection. And the color works, but the style really doesn't. So I'm going to get rid of those even though I like them. And I'm going to try these ones as well, but I don't have the right numbers or the, the right uh, letters. I don't have any E's, so that's not going to work for me either. I really hope that I push my layout up for you here in just a second. I think my struggle with these thickers is that I don't want something that's going to take up more attention. I want something kind of subtle or simple that can uh, go with the rest of what I already have. So that Stay Humble, Work Hard, Be Kind print and cut file from the Spring Wilna um, print and cuts is going to be part of my title, kind of. It inspired what my journaling would be for this layout. And most of what it talks about is how I always tell my daughter, um, like giving her advice before school starts and telling her to be, you know, be the good friend and be kind and all of that kind of thing. And so um, this is going to be more of an advice kind of page and layout. So now I'm going to layer up some of those flowers at the bottom of the frame. And I really like the way these flowers are shaped. They're lying perfectly on a photo. And I know that's how Wilna uses them. So she probably designed them like that. These chipboard word stickers look really good, kind of layered up with it as well. That other floral piece kind of looks like a photo corner. So I'm going to place it at the top right. And I'm going to put the um, stay humble, be kind, work hard at the, or whatever it says, <laughs> um, at the, or I'm going to place it on foam squares so that it stands up a little bit. So I'm just doing that now. And I'll place that now. Now, I don't know if you can tell from looking at this now, but those flowers have a different style than the circles. And I'm going to find a way to bring all of it together. And I think in the end, it works out. So my title's going to be first day of third grade or something like that. Third grade first day. And I'm going to use these little Ellie Studio letter stickers. And they're small, so they don't take up a lot of space visually or physically. And I really like the way that they're kind of an in-between pink color, which bridges the gap between the bright pink on my circles and the, the lighter pink on the florals. And so I really like 
how that brings them together. I'm going to use that three that I pulled out from my Maggie Holmes die cuts. And I think that might be from her first collection even. I'll link to it if it's still available. But um, I'm going to use that for the three for third. And so that also brings in that bright pink. So we're now we're combining the bright pink and the light pink together. And so that really helps to tie it all in. I'm putting the three on some foam squares too, just because when I have one thing popped up, I like to have a few other things popped up just so there's a few different things with the same dimension. And then I'm just going to rearrange those letters so they all fit in nicely and look nice and straight. And I did purposely make it so the Y in day kind of goes right, right next to, it actually goes a little bit underneath the S of stay humble. That way it just makes it feel like it all belongs together when you, when you do something like that. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and do my journaling. I'm drawing some lines. They're pretty thin, so my journaling is going to be quite small. And that's okay. I'm using a really thin uh, Muji pen for this. And when I'm doing journaling lines, I kind of draw the least amount that I think I'll use. And then if I need to draw a few extra lines, it's really easy at the end. So you'll see here that I do add a couple lines at the bottom of this just to uh, finish up what I wanted to say. And like I mentioned, I'm just kind of talking about how I always give my daughter the advice of being a good friend and all of that kind of thing um, on the first day of school. Once that's done, I'm going to stamp the date. And it's the first day of school and of third grade, which she's in fourth grade this year. So I'm just going to stamp the month and year, August 2014. And I'm just using a little space underneath that flower there to stamp that with my Chamel roller date stamp. Um, I'm going to do some Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine, but before I do, I thought it might be nice to add in some more word word um, stickers, these labels. And so I'm just pulling a few here. Some are Maggie Holmes. These ones are from Seven Paper, and I like the bright pink that it brings in. I'm also going to pull in some old Studio Calico, like I think from their Wanderlust collection it must have been, um, stickers as well, just to bring in another element of that creamy color. And that is going to finish it besides my um, Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine. So I'm going to do some of that here now. And I'm just sprinkling it along with all where all of the circles are. And I'll do that here in just a second. I'm going to go pretty heavy handed on the Gold Color Shine because why not? And I do move that little butterfly down to the bottom cluster. It feels better down there. So that is going to finish this one off. I'm going to come back and talk to you a little bit to wrap things up here. Okay, so here's the finished layout. It turned out quite different than what I had originally imagined, but I like it. So um, you can see that you can take the inspiration from art pieces and not interpret it literally. Um, I did make a, a gilded frame here, and let me just show you how that looks when you tilt it in the light. It's really pretty. Um, it looks dark when it's just laying here, but um, it looks really pretty in real life. Um, and I also did a bunch of paint techniques with lots of texture. Um, let me see if I can show you that. Let's see. So you can see there's lots of texture with this paint. There's, you can like feel the texture and that's what I was going for. I really wanted that texture. My gold color shine's still drying so I'm <laughs> trying to be careful there. Um, and so I really love the texture of that, but it was a little, it wasn't quite working when I had it on my original layout. So I cut it into circles and I think it, it works well this way. I incorporated some artistic print and cut um, files. There's lots and lots of products out there. These are from Wilna Furstenberg, like I mentioned, but there's lots of products out there that are very artistic right now. Um, watercolor is hugely popular and so I'm sure you can find lots of different things that kind of fit this this style um, and so I hope that you'll give being inspired by art a try it's a really fun technique there's endless possibilities you can be inspired by um, like a, a piece of fine art that's a painting or something that's a sculpture even um, an art installation like those strings I showed at the beginning lots of different ways to interpret this so hope that you'll give it a try and we will see you next week for our final video on inspiration is everywhere if you have any questions head over to my blog at craftygenscow.com and we'll see you next time bye bye